This is Diane Andrews in black and white. The issues you don't want to talk about. The arts and entertainment you need to know. And now here's your host, Diane Andrews. <laughs> Hi, I'm Diane Andrews of Diane Andrews in Black and White. Thank you for coming and visiting with us today in your television homes. And thank you on YouTube and your computer homes for visiting us when you watch us on YouTube at your convenience. I want to thank the end stage audience also for being here. But more importantly, I want to thank the people that are behind me today, which I'll in introduce in a minute. The name of this show is Living, Loving, and Leaving. We want to talk about the progression of life, and we want to talk about specifically a disease called Alzheimer's. I'm sure most of you have heard of Alzheimer's. Five million people in America have Alzheimer's. 36 million worldwide. Two-thirds of those people are women who have Alzheimer's. It's so strange. I did a show a few weeks ago, and suicide, two-thirds of the people who commit suicide are white males. Let's uh, start talking and let's introduce our guest. Attorney Pete LaSavio is with me, a personal friend of mine. And he's also, we couldn't put all the letters up there, but I'll tell you, he's a CPA and a CFP and something else too, certified <laughs> uh, financial planner. He's an attorney and he's a CPA. Then we have Catherine Schellings who's with us. Catherine is a licensed and has a master's in social work. Then I have, very happy to have with you, I always like to get a survivor. We don't call them victims on this show, a survivor. Mr. Benny Clark, thank you for being here. Let's start talking then about your plight or your caregiving. Most of the caregiving, well, 60% are women who care give for mm -hmm. Alzheimer's and for all care. I've been a caregiver myself for my mother. Pete has also been a caregiver for his mother. Uh, so tell us about the five or six years that you took care of your wife as a progression of Alzheimer's became more rapid and more severe. Well, at first, it's, it's not bad. Mm -hmm. And it just gradually gets worse and worse and worse. You know, they, they get to where they cannot understand anything right. you say. You mm -hmm. have to bathe them. You have to treat them just like a baby. Mm -hmm. And then they get combative. They hit you. They pinch you. I used to have blue marks on me. Right. And then it gets to a point to where you just can no longer take care of them. Right. She's in the nursing home. What's your wife's name? Lynette. And what nursing home? Well, we don't have to say what nursing home, but how long has it been that she's, she's been, been there? She's been there about three years now, I think. And does she know you when you come to visit her? She acts like she does, mm -hmm. but she can't talk, so I don't know. As we know, Alzheimer's is a form of dementia. Dementia is not a disease. Dementia is just a decline in the mental status. Well, Alzheimer's is about 80% of all people that they say have dementia. And Alzheimer's is a disease because it's progressive, as you just said, yes. with your wife. And you see people losing more and more because the brain is beginning mm -hmm. to shrink. Mm -hmm. Basically, the brain cells are dying. The neurons mm -hmm. in the head are basically dying. And we use the reason a person with Alzheimer's can remember what happened when they were five years old, but they can't remember what happened five minutes ago. Right. Because short term memory is in the frontal lobe, and in the frontal lobe is where it starts to decay or to die first. Pete, let's talk about what you've seen uh, in your practice, because you specifically deal with a lot of uh, older patients. That's correct, Diane. Clients, rather, for you. Yeah. <laughs> clients, that's mm -hmm. correct. Well, you know, I think what happens is the average person is just caught blindsided by it. You know, they don't really realize what's happening. There's a, some denial that the person is losing some mental capacity. Mm -hmm. And then it reaches a point where they uh, need care. And at that time, they realize that there's no safety net under them. You know, we think that the government has always uh, has a system to protect us. Yeah. And in this country, the system is to make us destitute. Mm -hmm. And people don't realize that there's ways to prevent themselves from becoming destitute. When you say the system is designed to make us destitute, just explain it. I do not disagree. It's designed <laughs> to make us destitute in a lot of ways. But in this way, what do you, what do you mean, Pete? Well, you know, the uh, default system for long-term care is Medicaid, not mm -hmm. Medicare. And a lot of people confuse the two terms because they're very similar. Right. Medicare, we've paid into the system. We get that. It's a right. Bill Gates will qualify for Medicare. That's right. right. Medicaid is a That's mean... That's President of Microsoft, if people <laughs> don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
The, for Medicaid, uh, it's a means-tested system. Mm -hmm. So if you're a single person, you have to spend down to $2,000. Mm -hmm. They give you, they take your check, they give you $38 to take care of all your personal needs while you're in the nursing home. Now they take, they pay your room and board at the nursing home, but you know, and they give you $38. That $38 has to cover you, in the state of Louisiana, it's $38, it varies by state. Really? Yeah. That $38 has to cover all your personal needs. Mm -hmm. It has to cover your sh a shampoo, your deodorant, your optical needs, your dental needs, uh, disposable diapers. Would not keep me in uh, Hershey King, Hershey, si Hershey candy bars, the king size Hershey candy bars. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you lost a lot of weight, Pete. You don't do that anymore. You don't eat those Hershey's anymore. <laughs> but anyway, you know, but, but that's it, though, Diane. I mean, it, it's, uh, that can be prevented. But if you let the system work, you know, you're on the road to destitution. When you have uh, a loved one like your spouse or your, uh, uh, your parent, uh, or anybody that you know that, that you right, love, you care about. yeah, you care about. They're on the road to destitution, and you're in the car with them. Right. People when, tend to think of Alzheimer's as an older person's disease. The face of Alzheimer's that most people know or have seen is the actress Rita Hayworth. We're going to show a picture and a little YouTube of Rita Hayworth. Now they all know what I am, and that should make you happy, Johnny. It's no use just you knowing it, Johnny. Now they all know that the mighty Johnny Barrow got taken. And that he... know what utensil to use. She, she might throw something across the table. She would bang on the table, but really loudly and repeatedly. You couldn't stop her. That's why I call this living. She lived her life. She married five times. She married Orson Welles. And she married a Muslim um, prince. And out of that relationship, she went in with $300,000. She came out with absolutely nothing in a few years. Rita Hayworth's daughter, the one from The Prince, does a big gala in the major cities in America now, the Rita Hayworth Alzheimer's Gala. Los Angeles, Chicago, New York, and other cities. And each one of them makes one gala between a million and, and $1.5 million every time that she does, that they do that gala yearly. But she was a great actress. She was beautiful. She drank some, I understand. And when she started declining with the, what they call now, used to be called early onset, but now it's called younger all, onset of Alzheimer's, they thought she was just drunk or, you know, something else was going on. But no one in the 50s, 60s, well, the 60s really, understood what Alzheimer's was. She died at 68 in 1987. What are you seeing, uh, Catherine? With because you have an you all have an organization that right. helps a right. lot of patients. You have Charlie's <laughs> Respite well, over right. there. Right. We have Alzheimer's Services, and Alzheimer's Services is our uh, nonprofit organization. And a program of Alzheimer's Services is Charlie's Place, like yeah. you were talking, which is a respite right. center, licensed as a respite. Explain center. to people. A lot of people don't know what respite means. Respite means um, basically the word respite means taking a break. Um, so with a respite center, our first goal is that caregiver of an individual takes that day off, that break that they need, a chance to take a deep breath for mm -hmm. a caregiver. Yeah. Um, and then the other goal of Charlie's Place, I like to say, is that we have a productive day for the individual with um, Alzheimer's. They have a feeling of a productive day and we get that accomplished by practicing what's called person-centered care, where mm -hmm. we get to know them and make sure that they have a feeling of a productive day. How many of your patients, when you say you get to know them and they have a productive, productive day, how many can really think they have a productive day? How many, there are seven stages of Alzheimer's, and, and as uh, Benny, as we're talking about, toward those final stages, in fact, the whole body becomes pretty much comatose in that seventh stage if you, mm -hmm. if you last that long. How many of your people, I know you don't have anybody in stage seven of Alzheimer's, but how many of those people that you have have the capacity to still understand where they are, who you are, and know if they're being productive? Well, I think that no matter where we are in the stage of the disease, we can have a quality of life, and mm -hmm. I think that's what we um, strive for at Charlie's Place. And, mm -hmm. you know, I talk about being productive. We have individuals, I'll give you some examples, mm -hmm. um, stay-at-home moms who've been stay-at-home moms their whole life. They help us maybe fold clothes, set the yeah. table. That gives them a sense of productivity. Right. Being, uh, still feeling needed. Right. Um, and I think we can Having a purpose. That. If everyone a purpose. needs a purpose. Exactly. That's right. Exactly. Right. And uh, then a, a retired pilot who was able mm -hmm. to get on a flight simulator to teach us how to fly a plane. Really? We allow that to happen and, and it get, again gives them a feeling of being productive. Yeah. Um, How did you get a flight 
simulator into well, it? Well, you you? we've got a wonderful computer program. Oh, okay. which is, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's, it's called It's Never Too Late, um, oh, or I N 2 L, that allowed us to do that. Um, a retired professor who uh, teaches Spanish to mm -hmm. us as his original language. Um, so as the disease progresses, and we've seen with that client in particular, um, he has gone back, he speaks seven languages. But because that always of, amazes right, me. Right, right. Yeah. Because of the disease, though, he's reverting back to his original language, right. which is Spanish. Right. And so we're utilizing that to still give him a feeling of a productive How, how many day. people do you have in Charlie's Place, or can you up to Up to 15 clients a day. Mm -hmm. um, and we keep it small and quaint like that yeah. so that uh, we keep it intimate and we can practice that person-centered care where we can have a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. Now, I want to give some recognition to who is named after Mr. Charlie... Charlie Veluzzo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, it's Charlie Veluzzo, Charlie Sparrow, and then Charlie Lamar. It's three All Charlies. Three Charlies, yes, yeah. So. You couldn't plan it. Any better <laughs> no, than that, right? could you? Wow. No. Didn't have a discrepancy with what the name exactly. was going to be. No exactly. one had a problem with the name of right. Charlie, I'm right. sure. <laughs> <laughs> but they were the individuals who gave kind of startup money to start Charlie's Place yeah. um, right at six years ago now. Yeah. Now, Pete, when we talk about um, Medicaid, because Medicaid is usually, it's a state different in every state, as, as we said. Medicare, we pay into. That's why when they start taking Medicare benefits for us from people, you know, who are going to get Medicare, we paid into this. This is not a charity. And, and the government tends to cut Medicare or help Medicare pay for Medicaid sometimes. That's correct. So, uh, which more people should understand that, and that's what we should be talking about. How can you take our money that we, we paid into? I have no problem helping anyone that needs help, but to take money for some people that need it who are Medicare. Well, you know, there's been a bill pending in Congress to lower the rate for the Medicare patient about 30 percent and put it at the same level as the Medicaid patient. So when you go to see the doctor, the Medicaid and Medicare patient are being paid the same amount. Now, every and year, Medicaid never paid into the system. But, and every year they you know, pass a bill to uh, delay that. How but, long has that been going on, since this current administration or before? It's been probably before this current administration. Really? But you know, the problem is, is that Democrats the have it in Congress, right? Yeah, you know, the, do the doctors, you know, they can't take a 30% Pete contract. and I disagree. Used to, I think we're on the same level now. I'm an independent. <laughs> 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 He's a Democrat, he was. Okay. <laughs> He's yeah, an independent right. now, too, I think. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, no, but I mean, it, it is a problem. It is, right. a, it is a problem. And the health care. You know, hopefully I'm wrong, but I think the health care is going to continue to get worse in this country. Oh, the health care, when I did my MBA thesis, I did on socialized medicine in, in Europe, and we're patterning, patterning our system after Europe. Europe has failed. Yeah. And uh, I had a friend who had to have a cancer surgery. He was over here, and he went back. He got diagnosed in Texas, and he went back to Europe, England, to try to get the surgery. They told him it would take like six months. He gathered himself $100,000 and came and had that, tech, that surgery. He's dying. He's stage four cancer. Mm -hmm. And he's dying in front of their face, right? Basically. Mm -hmm. So anyway, that's another subject. I'm going to do mm -hmm. one on Obamacare and the healthcare system later. But uh, so, what what do you offer, Pete, to the elderly or to people that uh, well, could use I, your services? What I do is I allow people to get good quality care without becoming destitute. Long term care is what you're, you're yeah, selling. Yeah, long term care. Mm -hmm. And you know, we do that for a married couple, like with. Uh, Benny, you know, mm -hmm. Benny came to me and he was worried about becoming destitute and we right. came up with a pro program where he's been able to uh, provide for his wife in the home mm -hmm. and then when she could provide in the home, she went to a nursing home, which is the progression most people go through right. and it hasn't fi financially devastated him. Right. Right, Ben? Right. I'm Tell us what you think of the program, Benny. Oh, it's, it's excellent. Mm -hmm. excellent. How long were you on the program before your wife had to go into the nursing home? I got on it just before she went in the nursing home. Mm -hmm. Oh, and it's still, now the yeah. nursing home part, uh, do they, the government pays for most of the nursing home, right? How does right. that work, they, Pete? Well, they, they, if you can qualify for Medicaid, they will uh, take your check, mm -hmm. and they pay for the Medicare, they pay for your in, medical insurance, and then they give you $38. That's the thirty-eight dollars. That's the personal about. needs allowance. Yeah, that's the thirty-eight dollars. You know, so, you know, and then your children are going to have to, or whoever your loved one is, going to have to provide you with other things in life, which can end up costing you two hundred or three hundred or five hundred dollars right. a month. Right. And you know, if if you let the system work, uh, for a married couple, they make you spend down to one hundred nineteen thousand two twenty. Mm-hmm. You know, and I think the, the false assumption a lot of people make is that they think they have enough money. You know, they have maybe uh, 
even as much as two and a half or three million dollars and they think they have enough money they don't right it, and, caregiving is very expensive you know, I also work in health care and uh, it's a very expensive proposition and yeah. even with my mother I, I didn't even have an aid in there not that I could not have afforded but I wanted to be there with her myself to do it and a lot of people don't care to do that anymore yeah. so we're gonna take a break in a, in a few seconds and then we're gonna come back and finish discussing living loving and leaving <laughs> Order your copies now of Diane Andrews' latest books, Third Man Out, a suspenseful mystery by Diane Andrews, and Gumbo for the Heart, 25 stories of faith, hope, and charity, both available now on Amazon.com. Thanks for coming back to Diane Andrews and Living, Loving, and Leaving. And part of doing this show this month on Time Magazine, they have this really cute baby and they talk about how to live to be 142 years old and some people in the next generations may be living that long. In the article, it, two things that they really spe uh, specify is that men live longer if they're married and that married couples tend to live longer because they have a support system. They also talk about presidents. About four of our presidents have lived to be over 90. Ronald Reagan was one that it finally came out that he did have Alzheimer's, but he still lived to be over 90. George Bush, number one, uh, did four different exercises a day, they said. One important thing is to exercise, one activity is to exercise every day, to have a med Mediterranean diet, which is full of nuts and veggies and not as much high, high protein. They say a moderate amount of protein and a stress-free life as you can. And they say that's why when you're married, you have someone you can lean on. But men, you men, listen out here, go get a wife. Because if you have a wife, you're more than likely, you die two times quicker than a woman over 65, in the 50s and 60s than a woman does. So we can deal without you all, but you all can't deal without us. That's correct, Diane. <laughs> That's absolutely correct. So, uh, Marie out there, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us, how did you find um, Attorney LaSavia? Well, it was through Alzheimer's Services. Mm -hmm. I, get, I get the mail outs and uh, mm -hmm. I saw that and I said, ah, that's it. Mm -hmm. I need help. Okay. So I did. It was a wonderful thing. Pete, do you want to give you a number of how people yes. can reach you? 225-769-4200, Diane. And it's uh, just LaSavio and, and Deja, Deja yeah. would be uh, yeah. on the law, the, law, the, law, yeah, the law firm, firm name. Yeah. Yeah. And he's here in Baton Rouge. Correct, in Baton Rouge. Now, you all service a 10 parish uh, area. Correct. And what, yeah. what 10 are they? We, we service East Baton Rouge and then the nine surrounding parishes. Um, mm -hmm. That uh, And we, we service that 10 parishes, but then the, the thing is we'll take phone calls from anybody. You know, our goal is to, is to help uh, individuals, you know, uh, caregivers as well as individuals with dementia, uh, coping with this disease mm -hmm. and with other forms of dementia. So, um, not just Alzheimer's, exactly. which is about 80 percent of dementia. Correct, yeah, 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 correct. It is the most common. Well, uh, we had a little discussion in the break, and some people thought that uh, Muhammad Ali had had uh, Alzheimer's, but we really think it's a brain a trauma from being hit so right. much. Right. There are it. over 80 different causes mm -hmm. of dementia, which is just brain failure. Right. Something is going wrong with the brain. Right. Um, and it can be brain trauma. That's why you see the, the football helmets and things like that changing now. Right. Uh, we're trying to be a little bit more safer in that aspect. Um, it can we had be, a lot of that problem in the war with the, with the helmets right, that they were right. using didn't have the pads in them. In the and a lot places. of the actresses were, were buying pads uh, and helping one actress gave $90,000 for it because that was a big part of the traumatic brain injury for people coming back war. from the war. Yeah. Uh, you know, brain trauma can be a, a cause of dementia. Other other diseases, such as Parkinson's, we had right. spoke about just right. earlier. With Muhammad Ali. Right. We think that's can can have a, a portion of Parkinson's can be dementia. Mm -hmm. um, uh, frontal temporal lobe. Do you lobe. know any, you know, Aricept, there's really no cure for Alzheimer's, but Aricept was one of the first and, and it helps. We can slow down the <laughs> progression of the, the, of the mental status and the degeneration of the brain. Mm -hmm. You told me something the other day, <laughs> Benny, that you decided uh, because you know how your wife would want to live, to take her off of the medicines that she was on. Can you explain to, to the audience why? Yes. Well, uh, she's at a stage 
where she has no quality of life. Mm -hmm. So I saw no reason to continue to mm -hmm. give her something that would prolong this because right. she can't talk. Right. And she's, you know, totally dependent. So it was a hard decision, Very but I, hard I made the decision to do that. But you knew that's what she would want, and we all should yes. live by the way mm -hmm. our spouse or relatives yes. would want us to treat them. Right. Exactly. In this yes. stage, as you would, would you make that? Would you? Would she have made that same decision for you if it had been reversed? I would hope so. Because you would want the yeah. same thing. Yeah, I, I would hope so. She's a good Christian woman, mm -hmm. so we don't we don't worry and about. And she that. was younger than you, I think you told She's me. She's ten years younger than me. She got this back in the fifties. Now, with in her fifties. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With this being said, we were in a bad car accident. And she had some head trauma, yeah, head trauma. plus a broken arm, broken mm -hmm. leg. Yeah. It was pretty bad. She was over a month in the hospital. Right. Right after that, she really went down. Well, her might be part of what we were talking about with the brain trauma. Right, also. brain trauma can. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, what I have found in a lot of my clients is that some anything traumatic, physically traumatic mm -hmm. or even socially traumatic, mm -hmm. we hear a lot of uh, maybe caregivers caring for their mother and they say, my father passed away and as soon as that happened, we, we saw a decline. Mm -hmm. It could have been that the father was covering mm -hmm. up for the mother, but it also could be something socially traumatic that really just speeds up the progression of that disease um, for, for our time. Mm -hmm. And it, it makes a, a new normal. Yeah, and a lot of people die. When that spouse dies, they've been together yeah. forever. Mm -hmm. They're gone within a year. Yeah. Well, that know, happened to one of my aunts and uncles. You know, after, after Katrina, I had a lot of clients mm -hmm. that died, you know, mm -hmm. that were on Alzheimer's. Was that right, was, again. You know, there's a lot of people that are on Alzheimer's, you know, they sit in front of the TV every day, and what were they showing, yeah. at, you know, after, or right. you know, during Horrific Katrina? Yeah. Well, it was yeah. all yeah. that yeah. Uh, thing. And, and, Devastation. And I had a bunch right. of uh, clients die. Right, from but that. then, um, like he was mentioning, something physically traumatic, mm -hmm. a car wreck, right. uh, time spent Which in the hospital. Which she actually hit her head, so right. you know she had some brain exactly. damage. Exactly. Um, but then I've also heard the same thing with like a heart attack. You mm -hmm. know, dad had a heart attack all of a sudden, and then we saw the, um, the symptoms of Alzheimer's or dementia. Uh, so like I said, it, it mm -hmm. seems like it's socially traumatic or physically traumatic will speed up the progression. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's not that it causes the dementia, right, but that it just up. sped the progression up so now you're seeing the signs. Is there any message that you all would like to leave out uh, to the public uh, on your perception of Alzheimer's and how to take care of a patient? A patient now, I was a caregiver. My mother didn't have Alzheimer's. She had gotten hit by a car and ended up with an amputation. And I, I don't think your mother had Alzheimer's. Was it Pete when you were well, the caregiver, she, did she? Well, she had dementia. She we did have dementia. My mother had no dementia. Well, we, we never knew if it was Alzheimer's, but we didn't have an autopsy. Right. But that's what she so was she had a, is that Was that her only ailment? She wasn't uh, physically sick? Well, she fell and broke her hip, and then she couldn't learn to walk again because, because of, of the, the Alzheimer's. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, she was in, confined to a wheelchair. When, what year did she die? I don't think they have Aricep back then when she was... No, they had Aricep. It, it, it just come out, and uh -huh. we put her on it for um, a while, but it really didn't do her any good, so we took her off of it. Yeah. They didn't have Nomenda at the time, though. Yeah. And I think your wife was on both, you told me, Aricep, Aricep and Nomenda. Aricep and Nomenda, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Uh, Diane, I think what I'd like to say to people is that, you know, there's help available, mm -hmm. you know, and mm -hmm. don't be like a deer in the headlight just right. frozen. Yeah. Have Alzheimer's services. But we you do know. have Alzheimer's Association, too. You can't, uh, you know, there's other services out there, there are other that services. help. We want people to, you know, get help. Mm -hmm. But the local one is Alzheimer's services. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then the other thing is, is that, you know, there's no... You don't have to become destitute. Mm -hmm. You know, you can be protected even if, you know, it's a time when they've already been diagnosed, they've already gone into a nursing home. It's never too late to protect your money until the money's spent. Mm -hmm. If you go in and you spend it's all the... in a the nursing home, they're going to pay for every, this little $38 they give you. Uh, but they, you're really under the care of the government then, right? And they take any of your worldly possessions, if you have any of us. Some well, people they, have nothing. Well, they, you have to be down to $2,000, yeah. Diane. I mean, you know, if you're single and a married couple has to be down to 119220 plus the 2000 So, so I would suggest for people if, uh, you know, for planning ahead, you, n you should call Attorney Pete Lasavio and find out how to be, because living, loving, and leaving is a true fact. And that's why I named it this, because we all want to live as much as we can. We want to find love as, and love as hard as we can. But at the end of the day, the reality is, Let's make leaving as simple as we can for us and those that we leave behind. 
So that's what this is about. Anything from Alzheimer's Services? Uh, the one thing I would like to say is that Alzheimer's Services is here to hold a caregiver's hand through every single step of the journey, and mm -hmm. that's, that's what we want to be. We have support programs, educational programs, and then, like we discussed, Charlie's Place, but we really want to be that one-stop shop. Anything you need, don't ever hesitate to give us a call. Well, I think you've gotten three perspectives today from a person who actually was a caregiver for a person with Alzheimer's and has still got a little far more road to, to go with that yes. process, and we yes. wish you the best don't that we can with alone. that and your wife. Get help. Yeah. Don't go it alone. And we thank Attorney LaSavio for being here, and we thank Catherine from Alzheimer's Services here in Baton Rouge for being here. So we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back to do my clothes. Thank you very much. Order your copies now of Diane Andrews' latest books, Third Man Out, a suspenseful mystery by Diane Andrews, and Gumbo for the Heart, 25 stories of faith, hope, and charity, both available now on Amazon.com. Thanks for coming back for my clothes. You know, it's a tradition with me to always light a white candle because I believe you're illuminating the prosperity and the ability to prosper in your life in all kinds of ways, not just monetarily. We all want to prosper, but what I've seen, the more you give, the more you get. I did a show on homelessness about hunger and homelessness in America about three weeks ago. And about two weeks ago, me and one of my nephews went down and we fed the homeless. And I donated clothing and everything to the homeless. That is a passion of mine also. We've done so many shows, domestic violence, bullying, Islamic State, addictions, where one of my other nephews had lost uh, 50 pounds, and uh, one of the registered nurses had lost about 60 pounds. But we also did a couple who were drug addicts, who were, he was her pusher. That's a really good one. All the shows are out on YouTube. So go to YouTube.com, Diane Andrews in black and white, and then click on my pink dress and all the shows will come up at the end of this month, which is uh, February, the beginning of March. We'll have about 29 shows out there on YouTube.com in seven months. So we've been really trying to get you the things you want to see and hear. I always liked, I saw this as a little girl growing up in Marouge, Louisiana. And it said, if everyone lit just one little candle, what a bright world this could be. And if you th I ask people to just close your eyes and see an illumination in your world, starting in your room, in your home, in your neighborhood. Think of it as Christmas with only white lights. And let's try to shine a light on anything that you want to shine a light on. Take a cause. Everything does not take money. But you have a blessed day. 